Professor Spectrum, experts in spectral technology. Welcome back to Professor Spectrum. I'm Naomi Potter and I work at Portable Spectral Services as a spectral geologist. And I'm Zoe Shironi and I work as a spectral analyst. So today we're going to be answering some of the frequently Google questions about neo infrared and solar analysis. So here at Portable Spectral Services we have an ASD TerraSpec 4 and we use that in-house as well as hiring it out to companies who want to do in-field analysis. Okay, so let's get started. How does near infrared spectroscopy work? So near infrared spectroscopy works by using visible light. So you literally have a visible light beam coming out of the instrument. Uh, that's then directed onto the sample where it fundamentally looks at the structural components of what is actually in your sample. So rather than a chemical technique like something like portable XRF, mm -hmm. in this case we're actually looking at the compounds or in, for geology, the actual minerals within the sample. So it produces a spectrum where you have absorption peaks based on uh, the different bonds and that can be used to identify your compounds. What are some of the advantages of near-infrared spectroscopy? So near-infrared spectroscopy is a great method if you have uh, for a variety of sample types. You can use it on pulps, on hand samples. Um, it's a very quick analysis so it only takes up to about 10 seconds to analyse your material. Um, there's also software that has a library which has about 500 spectra of the most commonly known um, slur and near infrared active minerals. So that way you can quickly check and see what minerals you've got in your samples. What are some of the limitations of near infrared spectroscopy? So if you have really dark samples, because what you're essentially doing is you're measuring the light that gets reflected back from your sample. So if you've got a really dark sample, a lot of that light is going to get absorbed which means that it makes the spectrum very noisy and it makes it very difficult to identify what minerals you actually have in your sample. Um, secondly, if you've got water, so if your samples are damp or there's any kind of moisture in them, the instrument is designed essentially to analyse those kind of bonds, so your hydroxy bonds and your carbonate bonds and things like that. So if you have water on the surface of your sample, it's going to basically influence the ability to pick up those bonds that are actually in the minerals that you want to analyse um, from your sample. And then lastly would be that only some minerals are active. So because you're only looking at certain bonds within the mineral phases, so you're not looking at your silica bonds, you're looking at your carbonate bonds and your um, like water bonds within your actual minerals. And so because of that, it means you can only pick up certain minerals. So if you're looking for a mineral that can't be analysed with this technique, then there's no purpose of using the technique. So can you analyse everything? Are all minerals active in the swear region? No, so there are certain minerals that are going to be activated by the different um, areas of the spectrum. So that's why it's short wave infrared and near infrared spectroscopy because you have near infrared activated minerals and SWIR, so short wave infrared activated minerals. What is the difference between near infrared and FTIR? Okay, so I mean, fundamentally, of course, as in the name, they both use infrared light to analyse the sample. So they do actually analyse quite separate parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, and as such, the types of bonds that they actually uh, measure and respond to that activation is quite different. So um, they can be used together, actually, in parallel, if you mm -hmm. want to buy a comprehensive overview. Um, so SWIR, or the near infrared region, uh, really primarily looks, as you mentioned before, about your uh, sulfate bonds, carbonate bonds, bound water, hydroxide groups, that sort of thing. Uh, whereas FTIR is a little bit more comprehensive, you can start picking up things such as uh, your silica bonds. One of the other big differences that can come into play is the ability to quantify the data as well. So FTIR is fantastic for quantification. Uh, your peak heights are directly proportional to the concentrations that are actually in the sample. Near infrared quantification is a little bit more limited. It's fantastic for trend analysis, so you could not only just abundance, but you can actually use it for trend analysis with regards to composition uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, th there are cases where you can use things such as partial least, least squared algorithms to look at uh, quantified trends, but fundamentally are more limited to trend analysis rather than uh, absolute quantification. Thanks for watching everyone. I'm Naomi. And I'm Sophie. And we'll see you next time.